Hi, this is Roger in Finland and today we're going to take a look at why wide angle lenses do not distort your face. And for the impatient ones and repeating the title, wide angle lenses do not distort your face. The distance between the subject and the sensor is what makes it distorted. It does happen that wide lenses may that happen. And if you do still not believe me, you're going to have to stick out for some more details. So before you start writing furiously down the comments, please let me show something to you. Right now, I'm being filming the A6400 from Sony with a Sigma 30mm f1.4. And now I'm going to change the lenses. Are you ready? 3, 2, 1. So, how does this look? Let me gamify this. Please take a quick moment and make a guess which focal length am I using right now. I'll give you two hints. One is that I do have lenses for Sony IPC that cover from 10 millimeter all the way up to 200 millimeter, all of them included. So please take a guess. The second tip is that, of course, I'm trying to fool you. So beware of that. All right, should we get the reveal? So you are looking at the Sony A6400 with the 10 to 18 millimeter f4 and it's at 10 millimeter. Really, take a look like this. And if you feel that I follow you, I'm really, really sorry. What did I just do? I just cropped it three times. Why three times? 10 millimeters by three, 30 millimeters. That's why the field of view was looking exactly the same than the 30 millimeter that I had mounted in the beginning. And of course, the camera is exactly in the same position than it was before. It's exactly the same distance from my face as it was before. And the point that I was trying to make, it stands. At the same distance from the camera, the amount of distortion, weirdness, or lack of weirdness in my face, it's exactly the same in 10 millimeters or in 30 millimeters. I just happen to look farther or closer, but the fact that this is a white lens, it doesn't magically distort my face. And now to the fact that we probably have lost some quality, certainly the depth of field is very, very different because of two reasons. One, now this is at f4. Second reason, I cropped three times, which does affect that as well. So. Let me turn this off for a moment. I'm gonna put back the 30 millimeter, but now let's do this again. 10 millimeter all the way wide open, cropped three times, and now I'm gonna change back to the 30 millimeter f1.4 point sigma. In three, two, one, and touch. As you can see, a very similar framing, different blurred background because this is an f1.4 at f1.4, and before we, was a, we were at f4 and very, very cropped. But the framing, the distortion, how my face looks, it's exactly the same than the crop version of the 10 millimeters. So if we just kind of demonstrated that the wide angles don't distort your face per se, but the distance to the sensor is what makes it, how come we always talk about that? Well, two things. One, the wide lenses allow you to do that because they allow you to be really, really close to the camera and still fit in because they can see a really, really wide field of view. And second, they kind of force you to do it because if you would like to have this same framing, meaning my head have the size in relationship to the frame, I would have to be much closer to the, to the camera, making my face distorted. Not because it's a wide lens, but because I'm closer to the camera and the wide lens kind of allows me to do it and forces me to do it. But it's not because of the lens, it's because of the distance. But now you'll say, okay, you're claiming that it's about like being close by, right? So well, how about macro lenses? How do you explain that macro shots, where actually the point is to get right into it, get really, really close to the subject, do not distort with whatever you're seeing. You never see like really, really distorted ants or mushrooms there. I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look. The short answer is that it's not only about the distance to the sensor, but the relative distance as well. Think about it this way. Right now, I'm about a meter and a half, a little bit less from the camera, but that's not saying much, right, is it? Because from my nose to the ear, there's maybe 20 centimeters distance, which means that my nose is about a meter and a half from the camera. My ears are about one meter and 70 centimeters from the camera. That means that between the nose and the ears, relatively, about a 10% difference. And now what I try to do is to get with a 10 to 18 millimeter f1.4, a similar framing that I had with a 30 millimeter, meaning the relative size of my head compared to the frame should be fairly similar to the one I had some moments ago. 
with a 30 millimeter, but obviously now things do look distorted and do look because now I'm much closer to the camera. Right now, my nose is about, I don't know, 40 centimeters, eh, roughly that, 40 centimeters from the sensor and the back of my head or the ears, which actually is what you can see doing funny things, they are about 60 centimeters away from the sensor. So the relative difference of distance between the beginning of my head and the end of my head and the sensor, now it's about 30%. It's significant or significant enough to make these things look funny. Does the lens distort my face? No, it doesn't. The fact that I'm really, really close to the camera and the lens allows it to show it all is what is distorting. I really need to apologize and you need to see me this way. I really, really don't like to see me this close to the camera. I was about to say, I don't like to see me with wide angle lenses, but I don't mind if I'm far away enough. But now I need to get far away from the camera so I can edit this video without looking like this because it's really painful. So we're gonna be putting back the 30 millimeter, which is the one that I like around here. And now you saw me distorting my face, my apologies for that. A good way to test this is also doing the same thing, but try to put a picture of yourself in front of the camera. It doesn't matter how close or how far you put it from the camera, it's not gonna distort much. Maybe on the edges because it's doing other kinds of weird things, but that's a different story. It's not because of the distance. When you put a picture in front of the camera, all of it is at the same distance. Since I got before very close to the camera, my nose were much closer in comparison to my ears where that's where the distortion was coming from. Still, what happens with those macro shots that you were asking before, right? Think about this little guy. I'm gonna try to take a macro-ish shot of it and show you. But the distance between the nose of the Smurf and the ears or the back of the head of the Smurf, it's what, about a centimeter, which means that if it's from the camera about 10 centimeters, the distance between nose and camera is 10, the distance between the back of the head and the camera is 11, which means that the relative distance of nose to sensor, back of the head to sensor is about 10%, which is the same one than being me with my big head at one meter and a half. That's why the distortion that you can see now with using a 30 millimeter, basically being this far away from the camera, is the same one that you see with this any macro lens. That's why it's not only about being close to the camera, but the relationship between things that are close and things that are far. I'm not sure if I should make a separate video, but let's leave it here also. Do telephoto lenses compress things? No, they don't. The compression happens when you have things which are far away enough from the sensor that the relative distance is almost the same. That's why things look more compressed when they are more far away. But you can do this a test but just by doing it yourself. Do this. So a way to understand this is just by taking a look at proportions. How do we see things? Basically, I'm going to be talking the same way that my four-year-old does. So how big is this thing? Well, right here is this big. If I put it this far, it's much smaller. That's what happens. And if I have the two of them close here, both of them from where I'm looking are equally small. If I have this one here and that one there, one looks much bigger than the other. And that's what happens. The relative distance between these two things and the sensor is really, really big. That's why this looks really big when it's close by and this looks small when it's far away. Wide angle lenses allow us to do that easily. They allow us to have something in front of the camera and because they see so wide things can be very very far away and we have this discrepancy of things which are close they look huge they would do anyway because they're close and the ones which are far away they look really really small because they are really really far what happens with the telephotos they don't allow us to basically see anything in front of us so they force us to see things which are very very far away only and because we can see only things which are far away from the camera most likely the relative distance will be fairly similar and things look compressed. Not because of the lens, but because how far they are. So what is the conclusion of all of this? And it's a little bit anticlimactic. The thing is, do white lenses distort and do telephoto lenses compress? No, they don't. So, but what happens really? We tend to use longer lenses to shoot things which are far away. And because they are equally far away or relatively to the camera, they do look compressed. We do usually use wide angle lenses to shoot things which are in front and still they allow us to show things which are very, very far away, making the ones which are close really big and the ones which are far really small. What happens when we put one single object in front of the camera 
using a telephoto lens. In order for us to see the object, we need to put it pretty far away from the camera, which means that the distance from the beginning of the object and the sensor and the end of the object and the sensor are very, very similar in their relative terms and things do look compressed. If we use a wide angle lens, we can put the object very, very, very close to the camera, meaning that the distance between the beginning of the object and sensor and end of the object and sensor, they are different enough to make things look funny and make things look distorted because of the relative distances and not because of the lenses. When we talk about distortion, we should probably get very, very much into detail to each and every single different lens, which they will have different distortions. There's like pin cushion and, and all sorts of different complicated things, but that's a different thing. That's about the design of the lenses. What I wanted to do today is to basically debunk the topic of do wide angle lenses distort your face? No, they don't. Telephoto lenses compress it? No, they don't. It's all about distance from subject to camera and relative distance between beginning and end of the subject with the camera but distortion and how far things are when it comes to compression and distortion. I'm not really sure how people will react to this, whether it's going to be like lots of discussion and disagreement in the comments. Hopefully I was able to demonstrate to you what I was talking about, especially using the super wide angle lens to make my face look normal, which was possible, with the cropping, of course. But I hope you liked the video. Hopefully you learned something new today, or at least I'm going to make you question what you need when go out and do some testing, which is the best way there is to really try to understand how things do work. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. And we're going to see you soon for some more content.